Happy Sabbath day. This is June 23rd. And, you know, this is the part two of the Great Deception. And this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And if you haven't listened to part one, please do before you listen to this. But uh, we're going to go to the Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy, starting uh, chapter 11 and starting in verse 13. And it shall come to pass if, there's always that big if, and it shall come to pass if ye shall hearken, that means listen to, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. Now, when it talks about corn, not talking about what we call corn necessarily in America. Uh, corn was just a generic word for food that they named uh, what the, uh, I guess the Mexicans call it maize, right? So it tells us to love the Lord and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Where else have we heard that? Now, let's go to Matthew 22. We're going to take a look at the Great Commandment. I've, I covered this in the other previous studies, but, you know, I'm going to cover it again. Now, those of you that don't know it, a Pharisee is a denomination of the Jews. Matter of fact, if you read the Jewish Encyclopedia, look up Pharisee. Uh, modern Judaism is the direct descendant of ancient Phariseeism. Their holy book was not the Torah, not the Bible, but the Talmud, the Babylonian Talmud. The word Talmud means learning. So you're talking about Babylonian learning or learning from Babylon. Think about that next time you hear about Mystery Babylon the Great in the 13th chapter of Revelation. So, then uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 15. We're going to read a bit, little bit of this. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him, who's him? Jesus. And took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. In other words, they're going to twist his words and try to catch him and uh, present him to the authorities as a rabble-rouser. And let me tell you something, people. In the days of Rome, if you were accused of treason, you didn't live very long. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians. Now, who were the Herodians? They were the family of the family of Herod. King Herod, you know King Herod, he was the one, uh, well, there there was a group of them. They were a family. Uh, when Herod, King Herod, was mocked and sent soldiers to kill all the children in Bethlehem after Jesus was born, and Mary and Joseph were warned in a dream to flee to Egypt, yeah, that, that family, Herod. And a lot of people don't know it, but the Jews are trying to rebuild, not the Temple of Solomon, but the Temple of Herod. Herod rebuilt the temple that was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. That was the Temple of Herod. And you've heard the saying, 
when you pay the piper, you call the tune? Yeah, well, did Herod build the temple because he wanted to worship God? Or did he do it because he wanted to have control? Oh yeah, he wanted control. And you better believe he had his people, not God's people, in that temple. Uh, there was a few of God's people in the temple, um, but you better believe the top people were uh, Herod's. And you know what's interesting? Pilate sent Jesus to Herod because he heard Jesus was of Herod's jurisdiction. And I'm sure Herod had sent, you know, Herod had spies everywhere, I'm sure, following Jesus around. Let me tell you something. If you've got a group with thousands of people, you better believe the government's going to spy, send their little informants and spies on you. Matter of fact, there was a, uh, I think there was like a Ku Klux Klan or a militia group or something. And the FBI had infiltrated it and the ATF had infiltrated it. And then the ATF and the A FBI were trying to arrest each other. There was more government agents in the group than there were people, you know, uh, that weren't government. So, you know, it, nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. But Jesus had thousands of followers at times. You better believe Herod and Pilate and, you know, they're, they're keeping an eye on him. You know, who is this guy teaching this stuff? What's he doing? You know, he's, you know, some people say he's a king. Is he trying to overthrow the empire of Rome? You know, they believe me. They're, so they're going to try to entangle him in his talk, in his words. Verse 16, And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Oh yeah, they're laying it on thick, hypocrites. Tell us therefore what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? In other words, should we pay taxes to Rome? You see, if Jesus says not to pay taxes, they're going to accuse him of treason and have him killed by the Romans. But what does it say in the Bible? I love this. Verse 18, But Jesus perceived their wickedness, and said, Why tempt ye me? In other words, why are you, uh, you know, why are you trying to trick me? Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? You know, Jesus used that word a lot, speaking to the Jews. A lot. He says, Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? In other words, whose picture is on this coin? And superscription, you know, you've heard a script. That means writing. Superscription. So in other words, whose picture and writing is on this coin? They say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And unto God the thing, things that are God's. And when they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. Yep, they tried to trick Jesus, but Jesus bested them. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say there that there is no resurrection, and asked him. Now this is another denomination of the Jews. Now, the Sadducees, generally, they didn't believe in the Babylonian Talmud like the Pharisees did. They were the keepers of the temple, and they only believed in the first five books of Moses in the Bible. 
You're talking Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. These are generally ascribed to being Levitical priests. You've ever heard of the book of Leviticus? Well, this is the Sadducees. They didn't accept the book of Isaiah. They didn't accept the book of Psalms. They don't accept any of those other books. They only accept the books of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. They were the ones that handled the things that happened in the temple, the sacrifices, the animal sacrifices. They were experts on what to do, the book of Leviticus. So, but they say that there's no resurrection because guess what? There's no resurrection in the first five books of the Bible mentioned. Well, actually, there kind of is, but they didn't see it. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, okay, see, this is their thing, Moses. Moses said, if a man die having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed, or children, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now, there was with us seven brethren, and the first, when he had married a wife, deceased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. In other words, he married her, he died. No issue means he had no children. So then the next brother gets her, right? Likewise, the second also, and the third unto the seventh. And last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err. E-R-R. -R. That's where we get the word error. 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 Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. You know, I find it interesting that the people that tell you that uh, the fallen angels of Genesis 6 cannot have, uh, cannot have sex and can't have children, and they'll point to this verse and they'll say, See, see, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God. And they leave out those last two words in heaven. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Are all the angels in heaven? Uh, weren't some of the angels cast out of heaven? Satan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see, one word makes a, a big difference. I will repay you that money I borrowed. I will not pay you that money I borrowed. One word. Totally opposite meaning. But are as the angels of God in heaven. And if any of you doubt that the fallen angels in Genesis 6 were those sons of God, I've got an entire playlist on it. The angels that sinned, Genesis 6 like 12 or 15 hours. By the time you're done with that, you'll be like, wow. Yeah. Verse 31. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. I wish somebody would send the Jehovah's Witnesses a memo because they think God is the God of the dead. If anybody ever tells you about soul sleep and then they'll quote you, I think it's in the book of Psalms where uh, it says that the people that are dead, they know nothing. 
Uh, well, is it possible they're talking about they don't know anything about what's going on in this earth? Or are they just their soul sleeping? Well, the answer to that is Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls, S-O-U-L-S, -S, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived with Christ a thousand years. Okay? Now, if you need another witness, let's go to Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Now, I saw under the altars the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, and they cried. Who cried? The souls of those that were slain for the word of God. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. Unto who? The souls of those that were under the altar. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet a little while, I'm sorry, yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they would, as they were, should be fulfilled. You know, when you read this, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to explain it away, but, you know, when you're a Jehovah's Witness, eh, scriptures don't really matter. What really matters is what's in Awake, and uh, I forget the other magazine, but whatever the, 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 the whatever they write is far more important than anything uh, in the Bible. Back to Matthew 22, verse 32. I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead but of the living. That's right. God is the God of the living. You know, when the souls are, they're going to get robes and they're going to get resurrected bodies. Not this lump of flesh that we got now that's cor corruption. We're going to put on incorruption. Matter of fact, let's read that real quick. I love this. 1 Corinthians you know, people, the, these people that tell you that Paul was a false apostle, run, people. When you hear somebody say that, rebuke those devils in, in flesh, rebuke them and run. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in in incorruption. So the flesh is sown in corruption, but when we're raised from the dead, it's going to be incorruption. It's not going to be corrupted. It's going to be perfect. First Corinthians 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Hmm. All right, back to Matthew chapter 22. You know, you could always pause the study and, and you know, uh, go read the verse that I just mentioned and read the whole chapter and make sure that I'm not pulling verses out of context. 
which is what the Jehovah's Witnesses are perfectly experts of doing. You know, you should read the chapter before, the chapter of, and then the chapter after just to see what they're talking about, you know? So Jesus said, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, oh yeah, you don't believe in the resurrection of the dead? Jesus put the nail in their coffin. You know, you don't believe in the resurrection? I mean, what is a Sadducee? They were sad, you see, because they had... They thought when you died, that's it. There's nothing else. There is no resurrection. See, they were sad. Sad, you see, you know. I've heard that before, so. But when the Pharisees, you know, the Babylonian Talmud people, but when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him. Ooh, I'm going to trick I'm going to trick this Jesus. I'm a lawyer. I got a doctorate's degree in, in, in Torah and Talmud. And, you know, he, he's not a lawyer like modern day lawyers. He's a doctor of the law, the Bible law and Babylonian learning. Tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Isn't that exactly what we just read in Deuteronomy 11? Yeah, we're going to go back to Deuteronomy 11 in a minute. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Somebody tells you you got to keep Torah. This is keeping Torah. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. You're keeping Torah right here. Somebody starts telling you you got to keep the Noahide laws. Rebuke them and run because they're of the devil. God didn't teach them that. The Babylonian Talmud taught them that. All right, let's go back to Deuteronomy 11 and verse 13. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments. What commandments? Jesus said the two commandments. Jesus summed up the Ten Commandments in two. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. How can you go wrong? All the law and the prophets in those two laws. If ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, that I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. And I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle, that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. The great deception, people. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. And ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath, his anger, and then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you. What does it mean to kindle? You kindle a fire, people. It means to start a fire. Doesn't the Bible talk a lot about fire, the heavens and the earth burning up? You know, people say, oh, the King James Bible, it's just, it's just so hard to understand. No, it's not. No, it's not hard to understand. If you don't have the Spirit of God, you can't understand it anyways. 
doesn't matter what Bible you read. All right, let's read verse 17, and then we're going to take a look at some fire in the Bible. Just a couple verses. Uh, you know, sometimes I know I get off on these rabbit trails, but you know, sometimes it's good because you can do a little studying on your own. Uh, some people will tell you fire is always bad. Others will tell you fire is good. Uh, there is good fire and then there's bad fire. You don't want to end up in the lake of fire. That's the bad one. And then the Lord's wrath will be kindled against you and he shut up the heaven that there be no rain isn't there a lot of places in the united states where there's drought oh yeah that there be no rain and that the land yield not her fruit and lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the lord giveth you Here's an interesting verse. Boy, I tell you what, Baptist churches will never touch this verse. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. Jacob is Israel. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them. Didn't we just read about God's wrath being kindled? When you kindle a fire, you're starting a fire. And the house of Esau for stubble. Stubble is something you burn. It's worthless. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord hath spoken it. And according to Josephus, a Jewish historian who worked for the Romans, I don't know how truthful he is, or accurate, I should say, or whatever, Herod, the family of Herod was of Esau, Edom. So, of course, the black Hebrews say that white people are the children of Esau, and we're all going to be destroyed. Well, we'll see about that when Christ returns. All right, let's go take a look in the New Testament. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 3 and starting in verse 1. We might read this whole chapter. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And you got a whole bunch of preachers nowadays saying that when John the Baptist here was telling people to repent, he was telling them to repent of their unbelief and just believe. Personally, I was believe John was telling them to repent of their wickedness. I mean, even the devil believes in God, but he's not going to repent of his wickedness. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah. That's the Greek rendering of Isaiah. Saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Can you imagine John the Baptist walking into a modern-day church that bears his name, Baptist Church, with a camel's hair and, and a leathern girdle about his loins? I mean, they'd throw him out. They'd tell him, how dare you come to the house of the Lord with not dressed in your Sunday best. How dare you? Blasted hippie, get out of here. Jesus said of all those born of women, there was not a greater than John the Baptist. How's that for a testimony? 
And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their unbelief. No! They were confessing their sins. Boy, I tell you what, if I confessed all my sins, I'd probably have to spend two lifetimes. What can I tell you? But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, you know, the Jews, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, Boy, that sounds awful anti-Semitic, doesn't it? O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth, therefore, fruits, meat for repentance. These, are, these Jews believe in God, people. But he's saying, bring forth fruits, meat for repentance. Bring forth wor your works that are worthy to show that you've repented of your evil wickedness. That's basically what he's saying. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto every Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. What? What? Jesus is going to come and baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire? But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. See, fire is not always a bad thing, people. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 12. I'm going to probably end up reading this entire chapter. It's just, there's so much meat in the Word of God. You know, if you spend your time watching television, you're probably going to be deceived. But then again, the people that spend time doing Bible studies. They're not big TV people. Luke chapter 12 and verse 1. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trod one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, Jesus speaking. He's about to give a warning. He says, Beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Beware the leaven of the modern day Jews, which is hypocrisy. Well, I tell you what, when Jesus was speaking to the Jews, he used that word hypocrite many times. I tell you what, read the 8th chapter of John in the King James Bible. And this is why the so-called Torah keepers and the Hebrew Roots people and, and sacred name people all want you to believe that the, the Bible's wrong. Because it points out, Jesus points out the hypocrisy of the Jews. And that's not to say that the, the churches are much better. They're really not. If it's an organized church with a central denominational hierarchy, they're probably just as corrupt. 
You know, Jesus said the church is where our two or three are gathered together in his name. That's the church. Not a building on the corner of first and main. Beware ye the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. For the, there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Boy, I tell you what. When I was uh, in my young teens and 20s, there, I tell you what, there was a lot of people thought, boy, Bob, Bob will be on the short list of going to hell. I mean, it's a long list, but I would be at the top of, you know, the top. What can I tell you? Where, therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear in closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid. Be not afraid of them that kill the body. That's right. Don't be afraid of those that are, got, all they can do is kill the body. Be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. But you know, the Bible also says that perfect love casts out fear. Doesn't the Bible say, love the Lord thy God? Oh yeah. And perfect love casts out fear. But if you have no love for God, you better have fear of him. That's all I can tell you. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? And not one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Um, those of you that are bald, it's just an expression. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Also I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, very important. Whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the Son of Man, that's Jesus, him shall the Son of Man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. You don't want to hear those words. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You don't want to hear those words. You want to hear, well done, thou faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. At least that's what I want to hear. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemeth against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. And when they bring you unto the synagogues, who's, who's bringing you to the synagogues? The Jews. But when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing ye shall answer or what ye shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what ye ought to to say. And one of the companies said unto him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth possesseth. And he, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room 
were to bestow my fruits. In other words, I got this huge closet and this warehouse and this barn, and everything's full. Man, I don't have anywhere else. You know, I've still got last year's crop, and now I got this year's crop. What am I going to do with all this? Well, this is his solution. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. Haven't you heard that before? Eat, drink, and be merry? For tomorrow we die? Eat, drink, and be merry. Drink what? Grape juice? No. Wine. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? You see, he was laying up his treasures here on earth. He, his closets were full. His barn was full. His warehouse was full. And instead of sharing with those who were less fortunate, He wanted to keep it all for himself. And that's what rich, that's what makes, that's why rich people are rich. Because they're greedy and they're selfish and they don't care about nothing except for themselves and their love of money. There are people that are billionaires that if they saw you on the street and you hadn't eaten in a week, they wouldn't even give you a dollar to buy a checker burger and they're worth billions i know people like i've known people that were millionaires and they're they're you know that's why jesus said it was easier to thread a camel through the eye of a needle than it was for a rich man to get into heaven why because they love their money they don't love the lord they love their money you know, how much money, uh, you, these billionaires could spend a million dollars a day and never run out of money. Just the interest alone. And they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't give you a dollar for a checker burger if you were starving. Believe me. Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose things shall they be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Didn't in the book of Revelation, didn't the Lord warn the church of Laodicea to, to, to lay up, you know, buy gold tried in the fire? Oh yeah, sure did. And he said unto his disciples, Luke 20, 12, 22, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought of your life and what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Clothing, right? Consider, consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? You know, I remember, and I'm not bragging, I'm just telling you a story. I had a radio program um, when I was living in Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, I had a job driving a truck, and I did a radio show on Halloween, Satanism, and the occult. Three days later, I couldn't walk anymore. My back gave out. Never did go back to that job company wouldn't pay me disability. They wouldn't pay me workers' comp. They wouldn't pay me nothing. I was on my own. I was sleeping in my car in the dead of winter, 17 degrees out one uh, a few of those days. It was 17 degrees. Of course, I had I had good winter stuff, good winter clothes and uh, camping stuff and sleeping bags. You know, I, I wasn't comfortable, but I mean, I, I, I kept fairly warm. But you know, even when I had nothing and I couldn't work 
and I had no income. I never went hungry. I never went hungry. The Lord always provided. I remember one time the guy, uh, one guy that I'd been writing, he had a truck stop ministry where he made tapes for uh, cassette tapes for truck drivers, and I asked him to pray for me. You know, told him what had happened with me, and you know, I go to my post office box, and it's funny. I I walked up. I was walking up to the post office box. I was like, Lord, I got nothing. It's all up to you. I opened up post office box. There's a letter from the guy, the uh, ministry guy. I opened it up. There was two crisp $50 bills inside. I didn't ask him for any money. He says, I figured you could use this worse than I could. I, I tell you what, people, trust the Lord. He he always provides. Uh, I've, I've never gone hungry. It's just, you know, and I'm nobody special. I'm nobody special, believe me. Boy, I tell you what, you've, you've heard it say that uh, some people tell you, well, God, God's like a balance, you know. He puts all your good things on one side and the bad things on the other. And if you got more good and bad, you get into heaven. Well, that's a lie, people. But if that were true, I'd go to hell because my bad outweighed all the good I've ever done. I'll tell you that. I mean, our, we the only way we go to heaven is by our, our righteousness, by our faith in Christ and what he did on the cross. His righteousness. Luke 12, 25. And which of you, with taking thought, can add to a stature one cubit? Can you make yourself a, a, a foot and a half higher by thinking? No. If then, if ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. Yeah, where, where a moth isn't going to eat your wool and clothing. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yet your loins be girded about, and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord. When he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. Don't you want white robes with, of righteousness? I do. Verse 38, and if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered or allowed and not have suffered his house to be broken through. 
Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? I love Peter. He, he, he would ask some of the questions that he would ask. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if, that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and he shall begin to beat the men servants and maid ser maidens, and to eat and drink and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will apport, appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto, for unto whosoever much is given, of him shall be, shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. You know, if you're going to be an unbeliever, you're better off not knowing nothing of the Lord. Because even though you do things that are, you know, you, you're going to, you're worthy to be beaten a lot, you won't be because you didn't know any better. But people like me that have studied the Bible and we teach people wrong and we do wrong, we're going to get a lot more than than we deserve because we knew better people I'm afraid I'm almost terrified to teach believe it or not I, I'm afraid you know when it's my opinion I will tell you this is what I think if you think different that's okay because I'm gonna I'm gonna be held responsible for every single thing that I teach and I don't want to get beaten a lot. Luke 12, 49. Jesus speaking. I am come to send fire on the earth. Didn't Jesus, didn't John the Baptist said that he would baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire? Well, he's not, somebody who baptizes with the Holy Ghost, he's not going to throw them into hell. At least I don't think so. You know, if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're, you're in. I mean, you're the Lord's. That's the Lord's seal. I'd rather have the Lord's seal than the mark of the beast. I am come to send fire on the earth. And what will I if it be already kindled? But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth? I tell you, nay, but rather division. Don't you ever hear that song in December? Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. I'm probably singing that wrong, but Jesus said, Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth? I tell you, nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, 
the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And he said also to the people, when ye see a cloud rise out of the west, straightway ye say, there cometh a shower, and so it is. And when ye see the south wind blow, ye say, there will be heat, and it cometh to pass. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that ye do not discern this time? You could say the same thing for today. The church is looking at extermination. The storm clouds are gathering all over the world. God's people are about to be wiped off the face of the earth. And most of them are blind. Ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky and of the earth. But how is it that ye do not discern this time? Yea, and why even of yourselves judge ye not what is right? When thou goest with thine adversary to the magistrate, as thou art in the way, give diligence that thou mayest be delivered from him, lest he hate, hail thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and the officer cast thee into prison. I tell thee, thou shalt not depart thence till thou hast paid the very last might, which is a coin, small coin. You won't get out until you pay that last penny. All right, so Jesus said that, uh, John said he was going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jesus said he was going to bring fire on earth, right? Well, when, when did this happen? Well, remember when Jesus died and he was risen up on the third day, and then Pentecost happened. If memory serves me correctly, Pentecost was 50 days after Passover. I'm, I'm not exactly sure. I think it was either Passover or 50 days at the end of the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread, which was seven or eight days, something like that. Uh, you know, that's part of the deception. You know, the devil substituted... Easter, which is a, a witch goddess name, the name of a witch's goddess with her Easter eggs and her Playboy bunnies, I mean Easter bunnies, uh, for Passover, which, you know, right out of the book of Exodus and substituted, uh, you know, I, the, you know, the Lord's feast, the festivals, is very interesting. You can see God's plan of salvation in the festivals. You really can. But is our salvation predicated upon keeping the feasts? No, absolutely not. Our salvation is our faith in Christ and what he did on the cross. Love the Lord and love thy neighbor. That's, that's, that's it. Christ crucified, risen from the dead. That's the gospel. So what about the fire? Acts chapter 2 and verse 1. These are the acts of the apostles. That's what the book is called. What did the apostles do after Christ ascended up into heaven to be with the Father? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing, uh, a rushing mighty wind. The word wind is the same word in the Greek as spirit. Pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A. That's where they get the word for pneumatic tools, air tools. When you're working around water and you don't want high voltage electrical tools, you use air tools. You don't know what an air tool is, just go to a tire place. You know, tires, on, like a four tires on a car, they use pneumatic tools, air tools. Comes from the Greek, spirit, air, wind. Same word. You got to read the context to decide what, what, you know, if you're talking about a, 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 a tornado, obviously they're talking about wind. 
you're talking about a guy that's got the the pneuma raising people from the dead. They're talking about the Holy Spirit. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing, mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Fire. Ooh. See, these fire can be a good thing. These are the apostles and, and the believers. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they weren't speaking gibberish. They were speaking to people in their own languages to spread the gospel. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they, and, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now these were the real Jews. These were the, the Jews of the tribe of Judah that believed the Lord and followed him. And just because somebody claims to be a Jew doesn't make it so. Revelation 2.9, Jesus said, I know the blasphemy of those that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. And just because somebody says they're a Jew, just because somebody says they're a Christian, doesn't make it so. I knew a guy that was a salesman. And he would go to all the churches and he knew all the lingo. Oh yeah, I'm a Christian, born again, and blah, 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 blah. And he would sell to everybody and they'd, they'd buy from him because they... They were trying to help him out, thinking he's one of them. No, he wasn't. He knew all the lingo. He was just there to sell. And as soon as he sold to everybody that would buy from him, he'd go to another church. Things of the Lord? I don't know. I don't think so. But I don't make that decision. Verse 6. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. They weren't speaking gibberish. No, this wasn't a Pentecostal type mess. Everybody could understand what they were saying. That's what tongues were, languages. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how? Here we, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and in Cappadocia, in Pontius and Asia. Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? In other words, what's the meaning of this? Others, mocking, said, These men are full of new wine. They're drunk. But Peter, standing up from the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And people, I think this prophecy in Joel is going to happen in the last days. I am convinced that this is only the partial fulfillment, not the ultimate, that this is still going to come to pass in the last days. But this 
is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, or prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. I guess I'm going to be dreaming a dream. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and fire, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know, him being deter delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. You see, death, the pain of death couldn't hold Christ. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. People, I did a study on Abraham's bosom. B-O-S-O-M. All the Old Testament prophets before Christ went to a special compartment in hell called Abraham's bosom. Christ went there for three days and three nights, just like he said he would, like in the prophet Jonas. He said three days and three nights he would be in the heart of the earth. What was he doing there? He was preaching unto the spirits. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead. And those people are with Christ. The souls under the altar, they're with him today, awaiting their white robes and their resurrected bodies, people. And that, that is the gospel. And I did an entire study on Abraham's bosom. And people will try to tell you, oh, well, Jesus was just saying a parable. No, he wasn't. He called Abraham and Lazarus by name. It's not a parable, people. When Jesus said a parable, he said a parable. He said, and there was a rich man. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made me known to Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God hath sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, 
until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified. Who crucified the house of Israel? Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? That's right. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Acts 2.38 Then Peter said unto them, Repent! There's that dirty word again, repent. These people believed in God. What's it, what have they got to repent from? Their wickedness. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Oh yeah. That's this that's true communism. When somebody that's rich believes they spread the wealth. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possession and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Fire, people. Sometimes fire is a good thing. If you're saved, if you're not, look out, baby, because here it comes. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1. Paul haters, they'll tell you that this doesn't belong in the Bible. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. In other words, the flesh, even as unto babes in Christ. You know, people, that's I'm a I'm a teacher. I'm not an evangelist. Evangelists will take up an unbeliever and turn him into a believer. But then they're babies in Christ. Me, a teacher, is supposed to take a baby in Christ and turn him into a soldier. But you know what? You don't become a soldier overnight. It takes a lot of studying and preparing. You know, the Bible says um, it's like a, a the Word of God is like a sharp two-edged sword. Make sure your sword is sharp, people. There are so many heresies out there, I, I can't even begin. I, there's new ones. You know, I've been a Christian since the, the 80s, the late 80s, but I, you know, I never heard of this Hebrew roots garbage until just a few years ago. I mean, I got new stuff all the time. It's, I don't know. Even as unto babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet are ye able. You know what happens if you take a newborn baby 
that's not weaned and you feed them meat, they'll die. You got to feed a baby milk. And then after you've weaned them off the milk, well, then you can start feeding them solid food. And those of you that are parents, you know what I'm talking about. But it takes time. It takes time. Babes will choke on meat. There's some deep stuff in the Bible I can't even teach because most people can't receive it. That doesn't mean I'm smart or anything. It's just I've spent thousands of hours studying this stuff. I'll tell you what, the Word of God is more precious to me than that garbage filth on television and movies. I go to work and everybody's like, oh yeah, did you see such and such movie? No. Really? No. They think, they think like I'm like, look at me like I'm a three-eyed monster. No, I don't watch, go to movies. I don't watch TV. I, no, I don't know what Kim Kardashian was wearing. Uh, I don't care. I got something far more precious. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet are now, yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God. God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Increase. But he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are labors together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Husbandry. Ye are God's building. We are God's temple, people. Ye are God's building, according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. God is the wise master builder, not Paul. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the foundation. He's the cornerstone. If any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work, shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. Your work is going to be revealed by fire. My work is going to be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, if anything's left over, if any man's work abide, which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. In other words, when Christ burns up all the garbage in your life, and there's something left, you're going to get a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. See, fire isn't always a bad thing. But fire is going to burn up the bad stuff, and what's left over is the good stuff. Verse 16. Know ye not, 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, whom temple ye are. 
Let no man deceive himself. Isn't this series about the great deception? Oh, yeah. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Vain means worthless. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, Cephas is Peter, by the way, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God's. So if you belong to Christ, Christ belongs to God, we're all in this together, people. All right, I'm about done with this fire stuff, but uh, I got one more point I want to make. Uh, let's see. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1.1. 1, 1. We're going to be doing some studying in Thessalonians before this series is done. Uh, this is only part two, and we've already gone almost an hour and a half, and I have, I'm just barely getting started here. 2 Thessalonians 1.1. 1, 1. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus unto the church of the Thessalonians. That was a, a city in Thessalonica called Thessalonica in Greece. Unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and in the Lord and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is me, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Well, you'll never hear that preached on TBN, will you? Oh, Benny Hinn. God wants to make a, you a rich. Uh, send a God uh, your blessing. Open uh, your wallet and send us a check. Uh, oh, bless, bless, uh, praise a uh, God. Uh, ugh. Persecutions, trouble, tribulations, suffering. Boy, you don't want to hear, you, uh, you don't hear that on the 700 Prophets of Baal Club, do you? Verse 6, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. That's payback. Oh, they, they give you problems? They trouble you? They're going to get payback one day. Verse 7, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore, also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy, worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, no, 
that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh boy. In Hebrews 12, 29, it says, For our God is a consuming fire. The righteous fire is a good thing. But for the unbelieving and the wicked, fire is going to be a bad thing. So, if you're righteous, make sure you got some something left after the Lord burns up all our works with fire. Oh, this might end up being a two-hour study. I don't know. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. Paul haters will tell you that this book doesn't belong in the Bible. They say it's a fake book. Rebuke them. Call them liars. Call them the ministers of Satan. Because that's what they are. 2 Peter 3 verse 1. The second piece of... The second epistle, epistle's a letter, people. The second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts and saying, where's the promise of his coming? Where's the promise of his coming? The, you Christians have been saying the second coming for almost 2,000 years. Where is it? And saying, where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. Think about the days of Noah. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. See, the Lord, a day's a thousand years is like a day to him. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord. Do you know there's people now that will tell you that day, the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is two different events? Do you know that basically when they tell you that the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is not the same day, basically what they're doing is telling you that Christ is not Lord. Yeah. They'll tell you that the day of Christ is, I think the day of Christ they'll say is the pre-trib rapture, which is a false doctrine, a false prophecy, a heresy. And then they'll say, well, the day of the Lord is the second coming when he comes back at the end of the tribulation. Huh? The day of Christ is not the day of the Lord? You mean Jesus Christ is not Lord? It's the same day, people. Jesus Christ is Lord. The day of the Lord is the day of Christ. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Fire, people! And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. 
the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Burned up, people. Fire. The wicked are going to be burned. And the righteous, too. Verse 11. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. An account. Oh, this is why they Paul haters hate this verse right here. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, even as our beloved brother Paul, who, I'm sorry, our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking of them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle, which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. You know, people that deny Paul, they wrestle not only Paul's writings, but also it says, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You see, people that deny Paul, the Bible declares they are unlearned. In other words, they're 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 not they're not scholars. They're they're idiots. They're unlearned and they're unstable and they wrestle. Not only Paul's writings, but the other scriptures to their own destruction. People that deny Paul are going to be destroyed, according to 2 Peter. Verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. To me, that means don't fall for the Hebrew roots garbage, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. All right, people, this has been an hour and a half, and you know what? I've barely gotten started. But uh, duty calls. Uh, so let's make this the end of part two. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, and that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.